dog. Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking way, way over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and everything else here on this gorgeous kickoff to the Labor Day weekend 2023. That would make it September 1st. We are two-thirds of the way through 2023. It is Friday, September 1st, 23. And uh, so the deluge of vacation tours are starting to flood in. And I might have to interrupt this rant uh, if some guests arrive. So I better get right into it. So it being Friday, we all know what that means. It is time for uh, my least viewed video of the week, and that is my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at <coughs> mongabay.com to see what is on the minds uh, over there while the rest of the planet is riveted on Donald Trump's thug shot. Let's see what uh <coughs> what Rhett has on his mind about the various ways the planet is collapsing around us. Uh, and you know, you guys know how much I absolutely love it when um, Rhett asks a question in a headline, and this is my lucky day and yours because we have not just one question, we have two questions, and they're not just yes or no, no brain or yes or no questions. So and so, if you get too hot in the hot sun, I guess you can, you can sit out this rant. It's not that hot. Anyway, that little tropical dog acts like he's baking in the miserable 72 degree sun. So anyway, this will take up probably about half of the rant or these two questions and then we'll just touch base on a few other stories while we dodge the hopium. All right, we're going to start out with the question, what drives and halts tropical deforestation? So we're going to start out with the big question about tropical forest in general and then we're going to head over to the Congo forest in particular. Good God Almighty, it has done it again. This is the second time I have started this rant and, and this goddamn computer pulling this crap on me again. Uh, I've got people coming in here uh, you know, I've already shut this down, started this goddamn rant uh, over once, and uh, here I am again dealing with this block blankety blank computer. Uh, Jesus, what does it take to do this damn rant? Okay, we're gonna try it again. Okay, one more time. If this computer will not eat the Manga Bay rant, let's one more time uh, ask the question if we ever get to it again. <clears throat> what drives and halts tropical deforestation? Okay. Researchers have conducted a meta-analysis of 320 studies covering a period of 24 years going back to the last century to identify the key drivers of tropical deforestation. Okay, so deforestation is driven largely by agriculture, meaning knocking down forests to plant crops, 
So agriculture is another word for humans driving tropical deforestation. Right next to that is cattle ranching by humans. So the second driver of tropical deforestation is humans. The third driver is building roads. You know, humans building roads for humans to drive down. That is the third driver of tropical deforestation. The fourth driver, expanding cities into forest, otherwise known as humans, paving over the forest. And I love this last one unbelievably showing up here, population growth, otherwise known as population growth in humans. So, the top five drivers of deforestation are humans, 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 and humans. So, we now need to figure out if the top five drivers of tropical deforestation and every other environmental problem on planet Earth is humans, 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 and humans. Hmm. Let's see. So taking this into account, researchers say they ha huh, researchers say they ha huh, say they ha huh, hope the study can be, quote, a resource to guide policies and management toward actions that help reverse deforestation. Hmm. Policies and management guidelines to help reverse deforestation when the five leading causes of deforestation are humans, 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 and humans. I will let you guys uh, decide for yourself what policies and management decisions can we make. Okay, and that leads us to the second question. What would it cost? What would it cost to protect the Congo rainforest? The Congo Basin holds the world's second largest rainforest, the majority of which is in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, playing a vital role in carbon storage and ecological services that millions of people and species re rely upon. However, the DRC is a nation with the second highest rate of tropical deforestation behind Brazil. Uh, <clears throat> so, international commitments to protect the Congo rainforest have been historically meager compared with what experts say is actually needed and many in, of these commitments go unfilled. Okay, so on this episode of Manga Bay Explores the Congo Basin, we speak with experts about how much would it cost to protect the Congo rainforest. So I went and did a, a little bit of research. Okay, the population of the Democratic Republic of the Congo is right at 100 million, which is probably twice what it was 40 years ago and half of what it will be 40 years from now. And then I tried to find out how much does a vasectomy or a tubal ligation cost 
in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. You know, 50 million vasectomies and 50 million tubal ligations. And unfortunately, it's not that easy, so I kind of pulled a number out of my, uh, out of my hat and just called it $200. Okay, $200 to get sterilized in the Democratic Republic of Congo for every man, woman, and child to be sterilized at $200 per human in the Congo, I came out with $20 billion. We could save the Congo rainforest for $20 billion by sterilizing every human in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. There is one way to save the Congo rainforest. It is the same way as to save every other tropical rainforest, and that is to make tropical rainforest a human exclusion zone. There is one way, well, there's several ways to exclude humans, uh, but a really good way to exclude humans is to sterilize every human in the Congo rainforest. All right. Now that we have answered those two questions and the question and the answer to question one was the same answer as the answer to question two if you did not figure that out on yourself by now. Okay, so we're going to leave the questions to the Manga Bay comedy routine. You know, Rhett Butler isn't generally, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I really like Rhett, but the guy doesn't seem to have a really great sense of humor, but every once in a while, uh, Rhett Butler comes out with an absolute belly-aching guffaw. The belly-aching guffaw of the week. New Global Biodiversity Fund to restore nature worldwide by 2030 officially launches. <coughs> All right. I guess maybe, let's see, are we up to $20 billion to restore nature worldwide? Well, we know what it costs in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, so let's see how well we're doing. Representatives of 185 countries officially agreed to launch a new fund to ramp up investment to nations and meeting goals outlined in the Global Biodiversity Framework. All right. So far, Canada and the UK... Canada and the UK have ponied up almost $150 million. Uh, and I guess that's all. May, are they the only ones who have ponied up? Uh, anyway, so we are going to... Uh, To save the planet for a hundred and fifty million dollars so far when we need twenty billion dollars just to save the Congo uh, now of course you do understand since it's not pointed out here that every single every single goal of every single one of these unadulterated horseshit biodiversity protection goals have failed. Failed. 100% failure rate. It just seems to me, guys, like if I had a hundred and fifty million dollars to protect biodiversity, I would be sending it to the Democratic Republic of the Congo.
you know, it, Rhett Butler knows damn well uh, what these biodiversity protection things are all about. Uh, come on. Uh, we already talked about that uh, last week. Here's some article about uh, some marble mine in Cambodia taking down the planet. All right, we have nests, uh, nests, uh, nests, uh, nests, uh, nests of uh, 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 hope. So this is some hopium about buzzards. And where are these buzzards? These vultures? in Nepal. Yes. So it's now, it is considered good news when a wild bird population is not crashing. Is good news. But as long as we're talking about a wild bird population crashing, I haven't mentioned this one because I knew it would be uh, showing up here in uh, in uh, Manga Bay. Catastrophic breeding failure for penguins as Antarctic sea ice vanishes. Researchers found that a lack of sea ice around Antarctica's Bellingshausen Sea led to, quote, unprecedented breeding failure in four out of five emperor penguin colonies there. Sea ice cover in Antarctica has been experiencing record lows, which could spell disaster for the future of this iconic Antarctic species. Previous estimates have suggested that if current rates of global warming persist, more than 90% of penguin colonies would be, quote, quasi-extinct. Quasi-extinct by the end of the century. Well, I think that 90% of penguin colonies were quasi-extinct by the end of the 20th century. The, the uh, penguin colonies will be 100% extinct by the end of the 21st century. There's not a goddamn thing quasi about it. Quasi-extinct. You know, the, uh, the implicit hopium in, in bullshit terms like quasi-extinct. Come on, Rhett. Uh, all right. So this is another definition of good news. Conservationists work to restore, to restore the last remnant of a once great Ugandan forest. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. <laughs> yep. Restoring a once great forest. And, uh,. Next to this, this is one uh, of, of this uh, talking about the great debate between planet eaters and planet nibblers. So, when you see this uh, term in Manga Bay or any other environmental organization, you see this word communities communities that is another code word usually a lefty code word for planet nibblers okay that if 
one person in a community, all right, uh, is, is frequently noble savages. If it's not outright noble savages, you know, it's some version of these dark-skinned people with noses a little bit flatter than our own, as Joseph Conrad uh, would say. But you know who they're talking about. They're not talking about communities of rich honkies. Okay, when you read the word communities, read Planet Nibbler. <clears throat> communities are not the true threat true threat to the Mabira forest, which, which I think is the one we were just talking about in Uganda or some other forest in Uganda or some, in any of those other shithole countries in, in Africa. Okay. Mabira is a surviving fragment of lowland forest that is now an important refuge for a diverse range of animals and plants in central Uganda. Uh, and so, you know, it is these communities that are uh, restoring the forest. Uh, so, having seen off, meaning, I guess, seen off, is that an English language, some Brit expression for driven off? Having, having driven off a government plan to clear a third of the forest to grow sugar cane, uh, this uh, person writing this opinion piece says community use of Mabira is not necessarily a threat. Uh, and, and of course, what he is talking about, uh, he is talking about commercial harvesting of firewood and other forest products for sale in nearby Kampala. Uh, so, as long as we can keep these communities from chopping down the trees to burn, to cook their bushmeat in the stew pot, and to sell their little trinkets to rich honky tourists, as long as we can convince them not to do that, then they won't be a threat. There you go. And so, just so you understand the difference before uh, between a planet nibbler and a planet eater. Okay, a planet eater is a giant, probably multinational sugar corporation. Uh, going in, paying off some of these uh, corrupt government agencies to give them permission to go in there and obliterate one-third of what's left of this forest off the face of the planet so they can grow this giant corporation can go in there with some, you know, monoculture to, uh, to create all of this tooth-rotting crap to sell to clueless moron consumers uh, all over the planet. A giant multinational sugar corporation is a planet eater. Some dude with darker skin and a nose a little bit flatter than our own going into the same forest, okay, and chopping down trees to make charcoal for the stew pot and trinkets to sell to clueless moron tourists is a planet nibbler.
This is not rocket science. But anyway, guys, I'm supposed to have some uh, guests arriving in the next 10 minutes. So let me just touch against uh, a few more headlines. Those are really the main stories I wanted to talk about. We already talked about the price of wheat last week. And oh yeah, here is uh, of all of the hopium. Huh. 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 Hope. Hope. But no free pass as Pacific corals show tolerance to warming oceans. You know, I was wondering where that clueless moron, what's his name, uh, Jimmy Dore, got it in his head, spouting the, this absolute apocalyptic, hopium-filled horseshit a few weeks ago that the coral reefs were fine, and it was because of crap like this in Manga Bay. This is unadulterated horseshit. Uh, Rhett Butler ought to be ashamed of himself for printing this unadulterated horseshit. Uh, yes. One expert says the study does have some limitations in providing a clear picture of how corals respond to different heat events. Do you think so? Anyway. All right. For the animal you've never heard of, the world's largest limpet, which is some sort of seashell, is slipping into extinction. Kiss goodbye, the world's largest limpet. Here is a really weird article about how they are implanting heart rate monitors into maimed wolves in Brazil's Cerrado to test the stress level of this endangered species, soon to be extinct species, the maimed wolf. Totally weird story. Uh, here we go. You would not believe that there is an online trade in Philippine hornbills threatening both the birds themselves and forests. Hmm. Philippine hornbills are being sold on Facebook despite efforts by the social network and wildlife authorities to crank down on the trade. Uh, and then there's another article talking about the very same thing, a thriving online market for wild birds emerges in Bangladesh, where Manga Bay has discovered up to 10 YouTube channels, Facebook groups, and profiles selling wild birds online despite the illegality of capturing, caging, and selling wild birds Hmm. Uh, yes. Would you believe we have skepticism? Skepticism as Cambodia expands its protected areas by more than a million hectares, otherwise known as over two and a half million acres. Cambodia has expanded the coverage of its protected areas. Huh. However, civil society groups have expressed skepticism hmm, about 
the ability of authorities to police this much larger area, given the ineffective enforcement of existing protected areas. Yeah, like we've been talking about how they are just handing over. So what they do is they create these protected areas and then they hand them over to these billionaire elites running the country. So uh, this is how this game is played. You wonder why people are being skeptical about a protected area in Cambodia. Uh, yeah, talking about conflicts over land and access to natural resources. It is all about access to natural resources and to, for Cambodia to declare two and a half million acres protected areas, you better believe, okay, is a way to give access to billionaire elites. Let's see. Okay. All right. Bangladesh is set to produce lithium batteries and electric vehicles to cut emissions. All right. There you go. Uh. Go buy yourself a Bangladesh electric vehicle to save the planet. Uh, wow. Would you believe that red project projects are falling far short of their claimed carbon cuts? Study finds new research reveals that forest carbon credits are not offsetting the vast majority of emissions that providers claim they are. A team of scientists looked at 26 red deforestation prevention project sites on three continents. Yes. And found that about 90 4% of the credits from these projects do not represent real reductions in carbon emissions. Do you think so? But guys, I have got to wrap this up because I think I have someone showing up here to do some forest bathing while they still can. So we're gonna have forest bathing going on all weekend here in paradise. Come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm and get in some forest bathing while you still can. Bye guys. All right, little dog. We need to go greet our guest. I go put on my vacation super host hat and go greet the normies here come the normies bye guys man look at this day